Multiple murder cases remain unsolved across Essex after many years of investigations. The lack of closure for families when losing a loved one in such tragic circumstances can be just as devastating as losing them. Both Essex Police and Suffolk Police say cases are never closed and they are regularly reviewed within the hope of bringing the culprits to justice, which still hang over loved ones' heads. Anyone wanting to give information on an unsolved case can call 101. If people are concerned about their safety in reporting crime, they can share information anonymously with the independent charity Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111 or Crime Stoppers slash UK dot org dot. Mary Kirk. Mary Kirk, a Dutch au pair, was killed in January 1958 after getting off a bus up Fox's Corner in 8 Ash Green at 10.45 p.m. The 19-year-old never made the 300-yard walk to a home in Bullbanks Farm and was found dead by a cyclist, a 20-minute drive away in Dedham Road near Boxstead having been beaten over the head with a tyre lever. No one has ever been convicted in connection with her death. Linda Smith Linda Smith, who lived in Foundry Lane, Earl's Clone, was found four days after she disappeared while running an errand on Monday the 16th, 1961. Her body was discovered in a ditch in Hadley Heath, Polstead, Suffolk, about 12 miles from her village. Detectives believe the tragic youngster, who was aged 12, had been strangled with her own school scarf. Linda was killed after leaving her great-aunt's house in Earl's Clone to go to the newsagents. She did the errands most days and it would normally take about 15 minutes. She was seen by a number of people as she made her way down Burrells Road. Linda was also seen looking through the newsagent's window but didn't go into the shop. Minutes later she had crossed the road and was chatting to a local cobbler. Although there were many people in the high street, Linda was never seen alive again. Ivory Davis Ivory was battered to death at her home in Holland Road, Westcliff in 1975. The house was ransacked and a ligature left around her neck, although it was not the cause of death. The murder weapon, a metal prior bar, was found near the body. No one has ever been charged with the murder. Two men were initially questioned on suspicion of carrying out the 1975 murder shortly after her death, but they were never charged. They remained the prime suspects for more than 30 years until the case took an unexpected turn in 2006 when detectives arrested a third man, aged 68, from Basildon on suspicion of murder. He too was later released without charge. Alison Morris The trainee teacher, aged 25, was stabbed multiple times in Ramsey as she walked down a footpath to the River Sour, 250 yards from her home in Warbness Road on the 1st of September 1979. The case remains unsolved. Essex police did consider whether Peter Sutcliffe may be a possible suspect. However, he was ruled out for a number of reasons, including his involvement in a crime in Bradford on the same day. Diane Jones Diane was the 35-year-old wife of a doctor living in Cogshaw. On July 23rd, 1983, the couple went out for a drink at the local public house, leaving at about 11pm to drive to their home. Diane was last seen at the front gate to their house, having got out of the car whilst her husband parked it. She was not reported missing until nine days after this event, at which time Essex police commenced inquiries. On October 22nd, 1983, some three months after she was last seen, Diane's body was discovered in a copse adjacent to the A1093 road at Marshallslam, Suffolk. Mrs Jones, who was two months pregnant, had multiple skull fractures. Police believed she'd been battered with a spiked hammer shortly after she went missing, but the weapon was never found. Exclusive inquiries were made in Suffolk and Essex at the time, and the investigation continued in the years since as further pieces of information came to light. But to date, Diana's killer has not been brought to justice. John Marshall The execution-style murder of Bella Ricky car dealer John Marshall remains a mystery as the £5,000 cash he took with him the day he disappeared was left untouched by his murderers. The 34-year-old left his home at 10pm on May the 15th, 1996 to finalise a business deal in Kent. Although his black Range Rover was seen crossing the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge at noon, 
he failed to return home or keep any of appointments that day. A devoted family man, his disappearance was completely out of character and devastating for his wife Tony and their three children. Seven days later, on May 22nd, an officer found Mr Marshall's body under straw and the unlocked boot of his Range Rover parked in Sydenham, South London. He'd been shot twice in the head and chest, but not with a shotgun. The Range Rover's keys, a grey head sports bag, two mobile phones and an 18 karat gold watch with a blue face were missing. Ronald Fuller Ronald Fuller was found bleeding to death on his front doorstep after he was gunned down by a motorcyclist. The painting decorator was shot several times as he left his house in Parkside Greys at 7.45 on August 29th 2000. The murder was carried out by a lone motorcyclist who sped off towards the old A13 via King Edward Drive on a modern step-down motor scooter displaying L plates. The year before his death, Mr Fuller had been working as a doorman at Epping Forest Country Club and had been arrested for public order offences following the stabbing of Darren Pearman. Charges were later dropped and police say there is no apparent link between the incidents. Andrea Daly Andrea Forti died of smoke insulation in the blaze which broke out at a mid-terrace house in Rochford Road on November 10th, 2005. Andrea's son, aged 17 and 20 at the time, jumped from a first floor bedroom window, but Andrea became trapped in a bedroom and died as a result of inhaling smoke. Extensive inquiries have been carried out to try and find those responsible, but despite their efforts, they remain at large and the motives for starting the fire are unknown. A further appeal for information was made in 2015 on the 10th anniversary of her death and again in 2017. The killer has still not come forward or been found. Paul Duckenfield Paul Duckenfield, who lived with his wife and two children in Portugal, was 41 and when he was last seen alive, arriving at Stansted Airport on Monday, September 15th, 2008. He regularly returned to the UK on business, flying from the continent to Stansted or East Midlands, and was believed to be involved in dealing steroids used by bodybuilders and athletes. He was well known in the gym scene in the West Midlands, Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire areas, and also ran a company called International Debt, and security consultants in Derby. Mr Duckenfield is believed to have visited gyms and leisure facilities when he visited the Great Saling and Braintree areas. On the last day he was seen, he was picked up by the airport by a business partner he had known for several years. The last independent sighting of Mr Duckenfield was in the evening of September the 15th, 2008 at the Palm Trees restaurant in Great Saling. He had planned to return home to his family on September the 19th or 20th by flying from East Midlands Airport to Faro, but did not make the flight and has never been seen or heard from since. Despite the fact that Mr Duckenfield's body has never been recovered, detectives believe he was murdered in the Essex area on or around September the 16th. Officers also believe the motive for his murder is linked to Paul's involvement in the supply of steroids. Senior Investigating Officer Detective Constable Inspector Martin Pasmore of the Kent and Essex CPD said 10 years on and life became no easier for Paul's wife, children, and parents or wider family. They still want answers as to what happened to their loved one. Over the last decade, loyalties would have changed and people may now feel able to come forward. If you know something about Paul's disappearance or death but haven't spoke to us, now is the time to take that step. His family don't want to spend another 10 years wondering. We do believe there is every possibility that the answer to Paul's death lies within the criminal fraternity and is linked to his apparent sterile dealing. The investigation into his disappearance has already uncovered serious crime and there are undoubtedly people who move within these circles with information that can help us. I would ask those people to consider Paul's family who are still desperately waiting for answers. If anyone has any information that could help us, do the right thing and come forward. Anyone with information can contact the Harlow Major Crime Team on 101. Albert Williams Albert Williams, 67, was found dead in his small flat in Cedar Close South End on August the 8th, 2015. Mr Williams had been stamped on, strangled and set on fire. Two men, Simon Smith of No Fixed Address and Anthony Smith of Westcliff, were cleared of his murder in December 2016. However, they were jailed for eight and a half years for a violent burglary at his home seven days before his death. They were said to have exploited 
his vulnerabilities and target him because of it, kicking and punching him, taking a box containing £2,000. Laddie Benson Shop owner Laddie Benson, 27, was stabbed to death in Chelmsford in November 2015. It was from Westcliff. The father of two ran a shoe and clothes shop called Numero 88 based in Princes Street. An inquest held into his death in 2016 heard his friends had refused to cooperate with the police. As a result, they have not been able to follow the lines of inquiry and his killer has never been identified. <laughs>